let me ask you this question. In a business context, why do we need to develop an agent-based simulation model or any simulation model for that matter? Because in some cases, doing experiment in the real world can be quite expensive and some cases can be quite dangerous. It can be unethical or or downright illegal. Now, as you know, a simulation model is a simplification of the real world. We should not make a simulation model that is as complex as the real world. Because otherwise, if we cannot solve the complex problem in the real world in the first place, then how can we solve it in a simulation model? if it is as complex as the real world. So we need to do some simplifications. Now, the consequence of doing simplification is that we have to do it carefully in such a way that the model is still representative of the real world. So the model should represent the key elements of the real world. And in the context of agent-based simulation, the model must capture the key agents and the key behaviors. A simulation model must capture the most essential elements of the system. Hence, there is a, a notion of validity here, whether or not our model is representative enough so that it can be used in a computer experiments in which the result from the computer experiments is meaningful. Because it is possible as a modeler we make incorrect simplifications. We probably miss some one or two key features of the system that turns out to be important. Therefore, we need to check the validity of the model. So the new keyword that I introduced to you today is model validations. So what is model validations? In a simple term, we are comparing the real world and the virtual world created by your simulation model. So when we run the simulation model, the output of a valid simulation model should be uh, representative of the output of the real world. So model validations is to assess the representativeness of your model. In a way, it concerns with ensuring that we are building the right model for the modeling purpose we set when we started the simulation modeling project. Validating an agent-based model is quite challenging. First, in agent-based simulation, we model individual behaviors. And we want to observe the interaction between individuals and how it generates a pattern that can be observed at the population level. So there are two levels of behavior that we want to observe. The individual behavior and the pattern at the population level. We need to do validations at both levels. We need to make sure that the behavior of the individuals reflect the behaviors of individuals in the real world. Likewise, the pattern that is generated by our agent-based simulation model should reflect the pattern that we have observed in the real world. The validation at the individual level is called micro-validation and the validation at the population level is called macro-validation. Questions that we typically ask during a micro-validation is whether or not we have included all key agents, whether or not we have included all key behaviors. 
is the proportion of agents in our model is representative of the real world? Is the behavior of the environment in our model representative of the environment in the real world? Is the structure of the network connections between agents representative? At the macro level, the main question that we ask is whether the output of our simulation model represents the pattern that we have observed in the real world or the pattern at the population level that is generated by our simulation model can be explained from the interactions of the individuals in the model. This creates a challenge for validating an agent-based simulation model. Validating an individual behavior can be quite challenging, especially if you are dealing with human. We know that collecting information about people's behavior is challenging in general, especially if the behavior is something that people don't want to talk about. If, for example, if we want to model about crimes, about behaviors that people are not proud about. The second challenge is related to um, the representativeness of the proportions of our agents. As we know that many systems involve heterogeneous agents, heterogeneous individuals. So how can we make sure that we have represent all key types of individual or agents in our model? Collecting a large number of samples from society can be quite a challenge as well. Nowadays, more and more data are collected at finer and finer level of details. This is what we call big data and it can help with, uh, with validating our agent-based model empirically. However, we should know that big data collects data that can be observed. And in agent-based model, we model both actions or behaviors that can be observed, as well as the internal behavior, the chains inside the agents, the mechanism inside the agents, what drives an agent to make that decisions. What drives an agent to make that behavior that can be observed? Now, the internal mechanism is not captured by the big data. So this is where we need to apply different techniques like survey, interview, role play games, and many other. If you want to know more about issues surrounding agent-based simulation model validations, you can read the introduction of this paper. And if you want to know more about simulation validation in general, you can read this tutorial paper. We can categorize validation methods into two dimensions. In the first dimension, whether or not the method is objective or subjective. An objective method means that for the same system and the same model to be compared, then the result will always be the same. These validation methods typically use statistical methods, while for the subjective methods, they typically rely on human judgment. On the second dimension, it's it is whether the system is observable or non-observable. When the system is observable, it means that the system exists and the data about the behavior can be collected. When the system is non-observable, it can mean that the system doesn't exist. For example, if you want to design a new policy, or even if the system exists, uh, we may not be able to collect the data that we need. Let, let us explore this one by one. 
Subjective methods for observable systems include the use of animations and visualizations. So typically, we run, we will run our model in front of the decision makers or in front of the subject matter experts. And then we, we get the feedback from them whether the behavior of the system is reasonable, is representative of the real world. The second method is exploring model behavior. So in this uh, approach, then we run our model with a number of different inputs and then try to understand whether the, and try to observe whether the behavior of the model is reasonable. For example, if we, for example, in a hospital setting, if we increase the number of doctors, then we would expect the number of the waiting time of the patients will be lowered or reduced. So by changing the, the inputs to the model and then assessing the impact on model output, we can get a better understanding about whether or not the model works as expected. As for the objective methods, uh, we can use a number a number of stati statistical comparison tests. So for example, we can use t-test. So in this case, we collect the data from the real world and then collect the data from the simulation outputs under the same conditions. Say for example, we want to model an emergency department in a hospital. In a hospital. And on that day, when we collect the data, the number of doctors uh, were, let's say, five. And then we collect the uh, waiting times of patients on that day. When we run the simulation model, then we need to run the simulation model under the same condition, which is the number of doctors is five. So then we can compare the waiting time produced by the simulations and the waiting time that we have collected in from the emergency department. Now, if the system is unobservable, for subjective methods, we will explore the model behavior. It's similar to what I have explained earlier. So we run the model under different sets of inputs, and then we will inspect whether the, mod the model behaves according to what we expect based on their based on the outputs. So we want to see how the model behaves under different sets of inputs. With this understanding of the model behaviors, we can tell whether the model is valid. Another method, another approach that we can use is by comparing our simulation model with another analytics model. So for example, we can simplify the model further so that we can use uh, analytics methods to solve the problem. So in, for example, in my work, I compared the output of an agent-based simulation model with mathematical formulas, a mathematical models in which the mathematical formulas form the upper and lower bounds on the performance on, this, on the outputs. And then I run the simulation model and then see whether the output is within the boundaries set by the mathematical models. For the objective approach, we can compare our simulation model with another analytics model and we, we can compare the output of our simulation model and other, another analytics model using statistical methods. So then we can imagine we run our simulation model and then we produce a number of outputs and then we also run the other model and produce another output and may we do statis statistical comparison between the two. If the other analytics method the other analytics method is deterministic, it will only produce one number for example, then we can build a confidence interval around our uh, around our simulation model 
and then see whether the number produced by the analytics method is within the confidence interval.